Yeah, put your head on it. Anthony Panazzo! Yeah. Couple things up top. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Clap it up for yourselves on a Sunday night. Yeah. Just have fun tonight. These are, these are, none of these jokes are new. They're all tried and true on the north side and the south side of Chicago. It's not, an, any, it's not like an open mic. There's nothing new here. Like if your buttholes get tightened, like loosen them up, right? Like just <laughs> drop a deuce and let it loose. Just have fun. Nothing I'm gonna say in the second half has not worked in a room full of 200 plus black people. It's okay, like you don't have to like look around to see if they're laughing. Just laugh, it's all good. Like you're not, <laughs> a couple of you even tightened up right there. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> just have fun, let loose. Nobody's gonna put this on World Star. Don't worry about it, you know, just laugh without worry about being in trouble or getting canceled and just have fun, man. You know, don't pull a Will Smith. I will punch you right back. I don't care. Like, I will. I'm 5'5", five five, but I box. I will hit you. I will hit you hard. And if I can't get you, Jay or anybody else in the back has got my back. So don't do that. Yeah. It's not smart. So just have fun, man. I'm in such a good mood. I'm in such a good mood today. I actually scored a free $800 suit. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah. It was from Lori Lightfoot. She didn't want it. And uh, yeah, she just... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're the same height, so it worked out and uh <laughs> Yeah, so I took it. <laughs> so I'm I'm a lesbian now, I date women, so it, <laughs> it all worked out. It all worked out, man. That's pretty much the barometer of what you're gonna get. Um <laughs> You know, I don't do like political jokes. I don't do like Roe v. Wade or abortion jokes. They never deliver, so I never do those. Um, yeah. <laughs> Vasectomy jokes work 99% of the time, so just know that, fellas, get your tubes tied. It's gonna be good. Like we're gonna have fun. That was a test to see if you guys were gonna loosen the butts. Didn't work so far. So <laughs> you're still, you're still a little tight. So get some, uh, take some Metamucil or something. I probably got some upstairs. It's fine, but. No, man, I'm just so glad we're doing this again, right? Like, yeah, doing comedy, man. We had to do Zoom comedy shows. Like, it's, it's, it was terrible. Like, it, it was awful. Like, some guy was baking a cake during my set. Like, he just literally, he was like, I'm like, dude, are you baking a cake? He's like, yeah. I'm like, can you mute your mic? Like, what? Do whatever you're doing with vanilla extract, like, in, in, in silence, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't know why we were all like trying to convince one another that Zoom was great. Like it was, it was pretty terrible. Like I don't know why it was always like, oh, Zoom's great, it's the best, and I have to leave, that's the best. No, it was terrible, like, right? You had to get a meeting ID and a password, like you were going someplace really cool, right? Some speakeasy, right? And you had to plug it all in, right? And then it was like, the host will let you in momentarily. Like, what, 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 where am I going, right? Then you log on, it's all the, like the little Brady Bunch heads that start appearing on the screen, you know, like, here's the story of another Zoom meeting that could have been handled in an email. Like, what, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing? It's terrible. And then people were late, you know? Like, how were you late for Zoom during quarantine? Like, what the hell, are you gonna blame the traffic was bad coming from your kitchen to your living room? Like, what are you doing? And you're all logged on, you're just waiting, like, we're just waiting on Bob. It's just me and you looking at you, like, yeah, Bob will be here any minute. Like, where the hell was Bob, man? Anybody fart on Zoom and then your screen went to the main screen? Does that happen to anybody? <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> I farted, I was like a deer in headlights. I was like, Poof, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and you can't deny it, the screen is glowing. Like, I'm percolating, I'm like... You can't hide. <laughs> like, how did they not fix that glitch like week one? You know, like, cue up a hype song, put on Eminem or something so we don't hear my ass. Like, you know, like, two trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside. Like, did he fart? No, that's his hype song. Leave him alone. He's got gas, so. You always knew how old somebody was on Zoom, too, by how close their eyeball was to that webcam. 
if you were like over 40, you were, or, you know, you were like all over the place, right? You're like, your eyeball is like right by the, the that like, like you're looking at a keyhole at a hotel. You're like, what's going on right now? I don't know. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> like you just see from the nostril up, right? <laughs> My mom's eye was so close, I was like, I can see inside of your soul. Back it up six feet right now. I want to be there. I don't see that. It's scary. Right before everything shut down, a woman came up to me. She's like, you're so funny. You're so funny. You should be on TikTok. <laughs> you should be on TikTok. I'm like, ma'am, I'm a middle-aged man. Like, why in God's name would I be on TikTok? Yeah. I don't know if she was a prophet or what, but that's literally all I've been doing is I've been on TikTok for <laughs> the last two years. Just dancing in my living room like a teenage girl for no one at all, you know? I'm like, I'm a savage. Classy, boozy, ratchet. Like, I shook it up so high. I was like, sassy, moody, nasty. Like, I got down low. That was for you right there, yeah. <laughs> you can tip me a dollar on the way out. It's fine at all. I threw my back out. I had to go to the chiropractor. It was embarrassing. He's like, he's like, what were you doing? I was like, I was doing the Megan Thee Stallion dance in my living room. He's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, I got 2,000 likes. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> um, uh, I got to go to physical therapy now twice a week. It's fine. It was, it was worth it. I don't know. I am 45. I know I look great. Um, I do. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I do identify as 27, though, if anybody ever asks me. Um, my pronouns are he, hmm. <laughs> Is he a man? I don't know. <laughs> he could either be 45 or 14. We don't know. <laughs> no. When I shop, I can literally shop in the men's section and the boys' section at Target. Like, I think I'm going to call myself non-binary. Is that a term I can use? Will anybody be upset by that? No. It's my turn. You can't be affected by that. I don't even know what I want to identify as truthfully. Like, I don't even know if I want to identify as white anymore. It's been a bad year for the whites. I think I'm done. Like, I think I'm just going to check off Italian and other in the box. You know, just, uh, I don't even know if I want to identify as Italian because Cuomo's, they ruined it for everybody, you know? He's just like, I'm not a pervert. I'm Italian. Hey, 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 Throwing us all under the bus, man. What's up with that? I don't know, man. I found out I was old this week. I took the bus without me asking the bus driver to lower the platform down for me. I felt really good about that. I don't know how they know. They just know. You know, just walk out. He's like, I'm like, I guess I'm going through the change. I'm going through menopause. I got to get on this ride. I'm doing old man things too. Like I signed up for Bed Bath & Beyond mobile alerts. I'm like, what am I, 97 years old here? I got a text at two o'clock in the morning. It said, you up. I was so excited. I thought it was a booty text. I put my glasses on. It was from Bed Bath & Beyond. It just said, you up for 20% off. I'm like, what do I do with that? <laughs> Going like a late night booty run for sheets? Like what the hell do I do with that, you know? Have good comforter sex? I don't know. What am I supposed to do with that? Then they have that adage when you're younger, liquor before beer, you're in the clear. Beer before liquor, never sicker. Remember that one? And they make a new one. Like if you're over 40 and you eat anything past 9 p.m., you may as well just call 911. Like I, <laughs> I had a jalapeno popper the other night. I was hungover for two weeks. Like I, I went to the hospital. I'm like, I need a ventilator. He's like, sir, you don't have COVID. We're not giving you a ventilator. I'm like, sir, I took a Pepto earlier. There's a fart stuck right here. I can't breathe. Like I need a ventilator. So now I'm in a lawsuit with Northwestern. It's fine. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. Cuomo's are gonna help me. It's I'm not worried about it. You know, it's fine. But I don't know. it's all like subtle though. Like when you hurt your back when you're younger, someone's like, "What'd you do your back?" Like I was playing football. You turn 40, someone's like, "What'd you do your back?" Like I was just watching football. Like I just <laughs> bent down to get the remote and I <laughs> turned weird and I threw my back out. Like. That's why I want to open up a store called Forever 41, right? There's no clothes. It's just a place I can stop and take a little rest for a little while. <laughs> that would be my jam. <laughs> I turned 45. My doctor called me. He's like, happy birthday, Anthony. I'm like, thank you. He's like, it's time for a colonoscopy. 
I'm like, what are you talking about? I thought it was 55. He's like, no, they changed it. Can you come in tomorrow? And I'm like, okay, I guess I could do that. And then they tell you what you gotta do. Some of you who've had one, you know the horrors of what goes into this. They give you a drink called Prep. It's just basically cookie dough Gatorade and you're just drinking it for like 24 hours. They don't tell you what Prep actually means. Prep is just prepping you to poop your pants for the next 24 hours. Like I, I literally was hovering over a toilet. Like I built a tent. Like I, I read two books. I read the whole Bible. I read Moby Dick. Like I, and it wasn't even normal poop. It was just like, poof, like it was just firing. And I was like, what is, I don't know what that was at all. Like I don't, that was scary. Like, and that's like 24 hours, right? And then they cart you in this room and the doctor's got his butt to my face. Like I'm laying on the t table here. And he, he turns around and he's like, hello, Anthony. He's like, we're gonna uh, take the camera. We're gonna go up your butt and then uh, we're gonna stick it down your throat and do a endoscopy too. And I was like, I hope you're using a different camera for that. Like I <laughs> don't want that. That's like a Pornhub category. That's <laughs> ass to mouth. I'm not into that. Like I don't wanna do that, right? It's bad, too, because everything was done, right? And my butthole didn't feel anything, like nothing at all. My throat, I couldn't swallow for two weeks. I'm like, what is, what's happening right now? Like, I thought I'd at least have a waddle. I had nothing. Like, I just lost my virginity. I felt nothing at all. I'm like, what is that? Like, nothing. They put a camcorder up my butt, and I felt nothing at all. I was eating ice chips for the next two weeks. I have no idea what happened that day, so it's fine, but... And I got misgendered three times in the last week. That was fun. Um, I went to go pick up my food. He's like, can I get a name for the order? I'm like, Anthony. He's like, Bethany, we'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> then I was on the phone with my credit card company. And he's like, ma'am, 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 calm down. I'm like, ma'am, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm sorry, sir. And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't really know what I am anymore. Like, I don't, I'm not sure anymore. Like, I was Bethany last night. I don't know. Then I was leaving a show, it was super late at night, I was pulling into my driveway and the, this guy like bolts out in front of my car and he like yelled something like really aggressive at me. And I put my window on and I go, what'd you say? And he's like, Rebecca! <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? He's like, are you Rebecca? <laughs> I'm like, who? He's like, you, are you Rebecca? I was like, no, I'm not Rebecca. He's like, my bad, I thought you were Rebecca, my Uber driver. I'm like, what the fuck, I look like a Rebecca? Like, what the fuck, like, what? I should've been like, you know what, I am Rebecca. Get, get in the car, where do you wanna go? I'll take you wherever you go. I drive for Uber now, let's go. Crazy, man. Crazy. But I appreciated that he, you know, the credit card guy was trying to get my pronouns right. You know, I think we're getting better at that, but you know, we're also getting a little bit too woke, you know. I caught myself being too woke the other day on Facebook. A comedian posted that his grandmother died, but he didn't write it that way. He wrote, please send prayers to my family. My grandmother has transitioned. <laughs> I was like, all right, I gotta show them that I'm an ally, right? <laughs> so I was like, that's awesome, congratulations. <laughs> the balloons and the confetti came down. He's like, she's dead, you prick. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, She's not woke, like she gone, like it's the opposite, like. <laughs> you're too woke, you end up at awake. You have to be careful, like it, it, it gets tricky, but. So fun. I like that the laughs travel here. <laughs> it's like the American Idol judges in the front, like, oh no. <laughs> People in the back are like, uh oh, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> fun, man. Been Chicago almost 15 years. Yeah, yeah, still, still have no idea how to dress. I literally went for a jog the other day in juicy shorts and a fur coat. Like, I don't know how to dress myself. I don't know. It's terrible, man. It's getting, it's getting dangerous, man. Somebody got held up at an Aldi in Lincoln Square. And the first thought I had was like, why is anybody robbing anybody at an Aldi? Like, what? <laughs> like, freeze, give me your Dr. Thunder because you can't afford Dr. Pepper, pop, 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 pop. Like, what? <laughs> freeze and give me that quarter that you're gonna get your cart and they get your cart back. Come on, pop out, like leave these people alone. Go rob somebody at a Whole Foods like an adult. Come on, get out of here, man. This is terrible. Get their generic Tostitos in peace. Come on, man, let's go. Yeah, 
This is the only city, lived in 12 US cities, the only city I've ever thrown my neck out because I was so cold. You know when you're like walking down like, like you know, you're like, oh, I could go two blocks, you know? And the wind is like hitting you and you go to that like full body, like seizure, like I'm almost there to 7-Eleven, just like five, five more feet and your full body like shaking, you know, you can't stop. And I literally twisted my neck. I was like, ow, like I threw my neck out. I had to wear a neck brace. Someone's like, would you, did you get like attacked? And I was like, no, man, I was just walking down Ashland and just live my life. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Every time I talk to my mom about the weather, she acts like I'm, I'm, I'm like talking about the gang violence, you know? She's like, how cold was it in Chicago, Anthony? Tell me how cold it was. How cold was it? Anthony, tell me how cold it was. Anthony, Anthony, tell me how cold was it. I was like, it was like negative 30 with the windshield. And she's like, oh my God. You better be careful. You could die. I'm like, from the wind chill? I'm like, stop watching CNN. Like, I've lived here a long time. I know I handle myself. Like, I know the only time I ever felt like, like I was ever truly threatened was the one time I didn't even do it that I almost put ketchup on my hot dog. Like, that was the only time that I felt like I might die. Yeah, I was at Wrigley Field, and like, I just reached in the vicinity, and some guy was like, don't even think about it, boy. Like, How did you get in here with a gun? He's like, don't worry about it. It's Put that mustard on the dog and you'll be all good to go. It's crazy. Clap if you're for that rule. No ketchup on a hot dog. Clap if you're for that rule. No ketchup on a hot dog. Yeah, you guys know. Now clap if you are for gay rights. Clap it up if you're for gay rights. Clap up if you're for gay rights. Could be everybody. Hate to break it to you, ketchup people, you can't be both, because that's pretty much how the anti-gay movement started, was people telling other people what they can and cannot do with their wieners. Like, you guys gotta relax. It's an outdated rule. Time to be as progressive as you claim. Come on. <laughs> if you guys are that uptight about a hot dog, I can't wait till the South Side starts here. This is gonna be. <laughs> I warned you all. I warned you all. Hey, Amen. It's fun. Everything changed really quickly. You know, everybody was worried about the vaccine. I got the J and J, and they took it off the shelves two weeks later. <laughs> And then they put it back on the menu. I basically got the McRib of the vaccines. <laughs> so, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I should have been at the song, but like, let me get a test kit too. <laughs> With the J and J, the McRib, you pick. <laughs> I didn't get the booster. I just decided to get an Aaron Rodgers jersey instead. So I've just been wearing that around town. Just, uh, go, Vax, go. <laughs> Some of y'all watch football and understand. <laughs> Weirdly offended over that. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't wait till the second half. Um, this is, uh, it's fun though, man. I had like a really good quarantine. Like I got an all plant-based diet. So I was eating nothing but marijuana plants for the whole two years, just <laughs> popping edibles, ordering stuff on Amazon I definitely didn't need. Like I bought a $89.99 weighted blanket as if the weight of the world wasn't enough. I'm like, let me add 10 more pounds to my chest. Like, somebody just sit on me. Sit on me right now. Like, probably should just ask for a hug or bought a Snuggie. I'm like, just sit on my stomach for me, you know? Then I bought an air fryer. Probably the best thing I ever bought is an air fryer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I put everything in that thing. I put my eggs, my coffee, my tax returns. Like, I put everything into the air fryer. Like, I told my family, I'm like, I want to be cremated in my air fryer. Like, I want... People will be at my funeral eating chicken wings, be like, this tastes like Express cologne and like a Target sweater. Are we, are we eating Anthony right now? Like, it's, like, it's what he wanted, bon appetit. Like, enjoy, go oh, enjoy. We had new terms that came out, that was great. Super spreader. Like, I can't believe you're going to Kenosha. That's a super spreader event. That is a super spreader event. That just sounds like a porn genre. I'm sorry, like, it's <laughs> like teen Asian super spreader. <laughs> She's a super spreader. <laughs> furloughed, that was the other one. People were like, I was furloughed. My husband got furloughed. I'm like, bitch, you got fired. Like, I don't know what are you using like a fancy term to describe getting fired. Like, I got furloughed from comedy for two years. I did nothing but Zoom shows and OnlyFans. So you guys can 
still find me on OnlyFans. I'll give you a coupon in the back after the show. It's just uh, 10% off. It's just the code is just Little Italy Big Italian Beef, and you guys can enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the pre-warning didn't help. Um, this is this is gonna be fun. No oh, man, I hope I hope we keep some things from uh, from COVID though. You know, like I hope we keep drive-by birthdays. You know, it's the best thing that came out of the last two years, right? I'm sorry, you're nine years old. You don't get my whole afternoon. I'm sorry. Like I. Like, I should just be able to pull up, like, beep, beep, Jason, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Here's a balloon, happy birthday. <laughs> just go on my way. Oh, man. Sneezes, remember how polite Midwesterners are when you sneeze? You're like, hit you. You're like, oh, God bless you. Need a tissue? Take a, take a tissue. Take a tissue. You know? Now you sneeze, it's like, oh, God, you. Get him the hell out of here. <laughs> Call 911. His droplets are friggin' everywhere. This guy's a scumbag. <laughs> Handshakes? I hope those go back to normal, because right now they're just like a really weird game of rock, paper, scissors that you didn't know you were playing with somebody. You know? You're like, hey, I'm just gonna start hugging people and stick my tongue in there. like, <laughs> Somebody fist bumped me the other day, I grabbed their whole hand. I was like, mm. <laughs> And then I locked it, like it was some weird thing that they didn't know, like, choo -choo. Mm, yeah, mm. <laughs> Oh, man. Coughing, you can't do that anymore, you know? You cough again, you may as well move out of state. Like, you can't do it, right? I, uh, I was at... Uh, Jules, if you're from Chicago, uh, Jules, if not. <laughs> yeah, you guys are great. Chicago people are great, man. Chicago, you got very passionate people here, man. You remind me, you, know, you guys add an S to everything. Jules, all these soldiers' fields. You'll flip out on somebody if they pronounce the S in Illinois. You're like, it's not Illinois, it's Illinois, you jag off. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and you get all these hard asses, like, I'm from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. I don't play that shit. I'm like, bitch, you're from Schaumburg. Sit down right now. Like, you grew up on the eight mile, but like eight miles from medieval times. Like, stop. <laughs> You saw like a horse drive by before you ever saw a real drive by. So, you would act like you did like rap battles with Eminem. <laughs> so, I was at the Jewels. And, um, <laughs> and I was starving and I just took like a nibble of a protein bar, right? And a little, little piece of the, uh, the, the uh, almond got stuck in my throat. And I was just trying to dilage it without anybody noticing, you know? I was like... And I look over, there's this Karen staring at me like, you son of a bitch. You cough right now, I'm gonna call 911 on you so fast. And I was like, first of all, I haven't coughed in public in two years, right? Second of all, I would rather die holding it in than letting it out. Like, that's how committed I am. So what did I do? I just kept shopping like nothing was happening at all. Like, I grabbed NyQuil and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I literally couldn't breathe. I literally ran out of the store, and there's like this herd. It was like a like a band of people that were like they were like like, like burn me at the stake, just staring at me like he's like get out of here. Like I'm like I don't have COVID. Like don't make me feel bad about this, right? So you know when you think you're gonna like say something that's gonna like be really meaningful, but the wrong thing comes out, right? So I, I gather all in my head, like it's like the end of like, a, like an 80s movie, and I'm like, I'm gonna get these best, you know, right? And I just look back at this big herd of people, and I just go, I had a piece of nut stuck in my throat, okay? <laughs> and then the nut shot right out of my mouth, and it was... It was nuts. Uh, it was... <laughs> oh, I, did have, I did have a rough year, though. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad to be doing this again, man. I, I actually tested positive for COVID 10 times. Um, yeah. In my head, like, you can't read the internet or you'll have it. Like, I farted the other night. I didn't smell it. I was like, oh, my God, I got COVID. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. My cat normally jumps right off the bed when I fart. She didn't even flinch. I'm like, my cat's got COVID too. Like, how do you test a cat for COVID? Like, is that the anal swab? I have no idea. I gave her a McRib. She was fine. It all worked out, but, you know. My girlfriend hates that joke so much. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a girlfriend. I just want to see what it felt like to say that out loud. Uh, <laughs> I have a girlfriend. Uh, she's a rescuer. She's great. Uh, we met. Um, <laughs> we met. We met at a Zoom show. A pause. Uh, it was great. Um, but um, but it was tough, man. Dating was tough. All the apps are terrible. I was on Farmers Only for a little while. You know, a lot of hoes. Um, and um, you know, Bumble, where the woman asks the man how tall he is first. Um, on Tinder for a little while. Every conversation on Tinder is the same. It's like, hi, hi, how tall are you? I'm, I'm so sick of the games, but how tall are you? I'm looking for the real deal, but how tall are you? I'm so sick of men objectifying women's bodies, but how tall are you? <laughs> One woman wrote me a message. She goes, are you a nugget? You look little. I was like, what the hell is a nugget? Like a chicken nugget? Like... If I called her a Happy Meal, I would have been canceled by morning. Like, what is, you know? It's tough. It's tough to date when you're not tall and you're not like a rock star, you know? That's why I compare everything to movies Star is Born. Remember that scene? Lady Gaga's in the van with Bradley Cooper. Lady Gaga gets out. Bradley Cooper puts the window down. She's walking away and he's like, hey. She turns around and he's like, just want to take another look at you. Every woman in the theater went nuts. They're like, oh my God. Oh my God, that is so romantic. Oh my God. That is so sweet. Why can't my guy do shit like that? Oh my God. Oh my God. I do that? I'm a creep. Okay. Just want to take another look at you. Like, I be on the news by nine o'clock, right? <laughs> we got the Craigslist killer. Put an Amber Alert on everybody's phone. Let's get him. Let's got the guy. We got the guy. That's why I rewrote the song Shallow from the movie. Yeah. So um, this is my rendition. I want you guys to cheer. This is my last uh, portion of this, this portion of the show. So I want you to cheer like you're at a concert. Enjoy yourself. I don't, I don't have, like, I'm not like a singer. So this is, you know, I'm self-conscious. I practice this in the car for a year. Like, so I just for this, so so everybody just start clapping like we're at a concert, I'm gonna sing that song, yeah, yeah. Keep that cheer, man. Keep it going, man. Yeah. Tell me something, girl. If I was 5'11", would you rock my world? Or do you need more? I got a really good job and a high credit score. I'm balling. And she'd sing back, she's like, tell me something, boy. Where exactly are you employed? I need more than wealth. What if I can't get got something down from the top shelf? I'm falling. And then I would block all of them. You guys have been great. This is my fourth side.
Thank you, guys. Come on, y'all. Come on. Okay, so that was the first half of the set. So it's called North Side, South Side. So now he's about to do the second half of the set. So y'all got to keep that energy. Like, yes. Yes. Anthony Bonanza. What's up, white people? Black people make some noise. <laughs> good, it's a little imbalanced, but we're gonna do good here. This is great, man. I'm just happy we're starting the uh, South Side portion at 8.30, so gives my black friends some time to get in here. Uh, <laughs> see a couple just snuck in the back there. This is good. Black people time is a real thing. Don't act like it's not. They admit it, they're laughing. It's okay, it's all good. That's why I'm convinced Jesus was black, you know? Because he hasn't come back yet. Like, it's, that's the... <laughs> he said, I will be back at an hour that you least expect it. That is the blackest thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. <laughs> he's gonna confuse the hell out of everybody, all, all the white people when he comes back, too. Because he's like, it's been a minute. <laughs> White people would be like, it's been 2,000 years, Jesus. What are you talking about? <laughs> You'd be so confused, man. You gotta have black friends to know what's going on sometimes, you know? Black people don't speak the way white people speak about where they're from. You know, like, white people are like, where are you from? Or where do you live? You know, like, I live in Lakeview. Black people ask, where do you stay? You know? This changes a lot. Like, where do you stay? Like, I'm staying with my cousin right now, you know, trying to get some stuff together, you know? Get it together. Two months later, where you stay? Like, oh, I stay south. I got a little place now, a little, little apartment out there. You know, stay there. This is this is gonna go hot. I can tell. This is, <laughs> this is just like the beginning. It's a big build, so <laughs> yeah. that's why I warned you. I warned you, man. Black friends are just better friends too. My white friends are terrible when I meet their friends. You know, there's like this is my friend Brian. You know, we play kickball together. <laughs> This is uh, Steven, we play softball, we drink craft beers together. <laughs> my black friends act like they're like my own personal hype man. They're the best people ever like, with, with this. I ran into my friend, Laryl, the other day. He was eating lunch with somebody else, one of his friends. And I was like, Laryl, I'm like, what up, man? And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> shit, he's like, Anthony motherfucking Bonazzo. <laughs> Like, Yo, DJ, TJ, you want you to meet my friend? This is Anthony motherfucker Bonazzo, only white boy to ever perform on the south side of Chicago with jokes and notes of Bronzeville. He tore that shit up, gonna be the first fucking white boy to get the first BET special, Anthony motherfucking Bonazzo. <laughs> shit, I'm like, can you follow me everywhere I go? Like, you are the best. You make me feel so important. <laughs> And he was introducing me to his friend, you know, he's like, he's like, it's my friend DJ Marie. And I was like, oh, is she a comic? He goes, DJ. I was like, DJ? I'm like, why do you say it like that? And that's when I remembered, black people love to say the title of the profession before they say their name, you know, DJ Marie. Comedian Mark Smith. I was like, did they do this with like regular jobs? Like, this is my plumber, Paul. <laughs> my attorney, Anton. <laughs> this is my dog walker, Darius. <laughs> This is my wife, she's my queen. <laughs> Man. Even, even comedy shows, white crowds, black crowds, very different. Like I perform north side, south side, I go anywhere, I don't care, you know? So when buttholes tighten up here, I'm, I'm like, okay, whatever, you guys just, probably never been south of Belmont, it's fine, you know? <laughs> You don't know what's going on. It, you know, it, it's, it's fun, man, because white crowds, you know, they'll be like. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's very smart. Did you hear that? <laughs> <Very smart. laughs> or they write a blog about it and they get upset. And uh, <laughs> if black people think you're funny, they'll repeat what you just said or they'll call you stupid. It's the best thing in the world. Anywhere in life, too. I was at Jules the other day, and I asked the guy, 
I was like, where's all the stuff for grown night? He goes, why you barbecue? And I'm like, all night. He goes, he said all night. <laughs> this white boy just said all night. He said all night. Oh shit, he said all night. Oh my God. He's like, what are you cooking? I'm like, well, growing up, I was an army brat, so I was gonna get brats. And he's like, you stupid. This white boy's stupid. <laughs> stupid. I'm stupid. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I used to get so insulted. I'm like, they're calling me stupid. Like, what's that? That means they love you. They think it's funny. You know? yeah. Facebook is very different, too. You know? Fucking white people will get their phones out. You know, they'll be at like Ravinia. Like, Here we are. We're at the B52's concert. We got some wine and charcuterie. Yeah. Oh my God, they're starting. Ten roof. Rest that. Yeah. 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 Black people put everything on, on live. You know, there's a, I, was at a, I saw a funeral the other day. They were lowering the body down in the coffin. I'm like, what the fuck is that? They'll be at a club. They're like, we out here. 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 We outside. We outside. We outside. I was like, damn, I need some Dramamine after that, man. Getting dizzy here. Big differences on the train, too, man. White women will talk on their phones, you know, real quietly about like brunch plans. You know? It's like, yeah, we're gonna go get frushi. It's like sushi, but it's made of fruit. You know? <laughs> oh my, oh my God! I didn't even know her and Brian broke up. That's so crazy. All right, I gotta go. I'm getting off the next stop. I'm going, I'm going to yoga. I'm getting off at Belmont. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Call me later. Totes, totes. Yeah, totes. Yeah. Uh, oh, totes, totes, totes. Yeah, totes. Totes, yeah. Uh, totes, yeah. Okay, bye. There's always that black dude that'll go through the scary door. I won't go through that door if the train is fully stopped. He'll go through and it's going 100 miles an hour and he never opens the door. He always kicks it, you know? He's like, I do not mean to alarm you. I am just here to talk. I'm like, you have already scared the shit out of everybody on this train. Like, you can't yell, don't be alarmed. And then we're not gonna be alarmed. That's not the way it works. I want the confidence of a black woman on the train because they'll act like they're in their own private cart. I literally heard a woman yell out the other day. She goes, bitch, I told you, you ain't fat, you pregnant. And I was like, oh my God. She just yelled that out loud. Like, I want that woman in my life as a friend. Like. <laughs> Forget Lori Life, but put her in, she'll fix everything in like a week. <laughs> then, I, then I almost saw a fight the other day, but the woman couldn't hit the other woman because there was, there was too many Cubs fans. So she was just threatening her from like afar. She's like, You lucky I can't get you, bitch. You lucky. You lucky, bitch. You lucky. You lucky I can't get you, bitch. You lucky. You lucky. You lucky, bitch. You lucky. You lucky I can't get you, bitch. You lucky. You lucky, you lucky, you lucky. This went on for 15 stops. You never hit her. And you could tell she either wanted to like punch her physically or get her like a good zinger, right? And the doors were already closing and she's halfway out of the train and you hear the doors like, doors closing. And she's running back to the train and she gets there like in the nick of time, the doors are like halfway closed. She sticks her foot in the door and hulks the door back open <laughs> And I'm sitting like right by the door and she turtlenecks her head like back in. And I'm like, oh my God, she's gonna kill her. Like, what is she gonna do right now? I had no idea. She sees the woman, she makes eye contact with her and she goes, I bet you suck dick from behind. <laughs> and I asked the guy next to me, did she just say suck dick from behind? Is that like He's like, yeah. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? He's like, I have no idea. I'm like, I... It doesn't even sound like an insult. It sounds like a compliment that you literally can go from behind and then pull it through. 
and then still do that. I don't know. If anybody knows how to do it, see me in the back after the show. If you, um, if you do a good job, I'll make that noise. I'll be like, <laughs> Weird mating call. <laughs> Fun times, man. I used to work. I work in a gym. I, I used to be there full time. You know, doing everything: personal trainer, yoga instructor, everything. I work with all these different people. It's amazing. I get so many great stories from all the different people that I work with over the years. And people always ask the dumbest questions, and you feel so bad laughing. But some of the questions are so dumb, and they're so sincere. You know, like, is the treadmill good for the cardiology? <laughs> What's better, the treadmill or the eucalyptical? I'm like, the eucalyptical, what the hell? Like, eucalyptus is an essential oil. Like, the ukulele is a musical instrument. Like, what kind of weird machine are you on? It's just like firing hot oil at your face. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of accidental farting in the gym, too. Like, it happens, man, and, you know, people don't know what to do, you know? This woman came in, she goes, I wanna be the next biggest loser, can I count when I crunch? I'm like, that's fine, you know? So I'm standing on her feet, and she's like, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Like, she skipped the next number in line with a fart, but acted like nothing just happened. By the time she got to the teens, she just gave up counting. It was just her farting in my face. And I'm standing above her like, biggest loser, I'm the biggest loser. You're practically shitting in my face, and I'm telling you, good job. One woman walked in like she was sniffing the gym out. She's like, <sighs> I'm like, can I help you? And she's like, what kind of machines you got in here for the breasts? I'm like, the breasts? I'm like, what? Am I supposed to offer to motorboat this woman? Like, how does this work, you know? My boss walks out, and I'm just like, <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm saving a gym membership. You're welcome. The sales are down, they're back up. I used to read all these dumb magazines in the gym too, Cosmo, all these things were laying around waiting for people, you know? It's like top 10 ways to please a woman, you know? One of them was like, if you're doing the deed on a woman, you should draw the alphabet with your tongue. And I was like, I just do the Konami code for Contra with my tongue, you know? I'm like, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start. <laughs> if that doesn't work, I blow on it, I'm like, <laughs> Stick another cartridge in there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I played so much original Nintendo, it's ruined me. Like, I played original Nintendo from like the age nine until like a couple weeks ago when I bought a Nintendo Switch. And um, I, um, it's ruined me because now whenever I'm looking for a woman's G spot, I hear the Mario Brothers music playing in my head, you know? Like when he's in the cave, you know? It's like. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Dun -dun 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 -dun. But then when you find it, it's like you got the star, you whatever the hell you want. It's like And then she jumps right under your flagpole. It works. It's an 8-bit bit for the gamers out there. Um I love doing comedy, man. I love, I love talking to people after shows. You know, black women love me. They call me Mr. Anthony. <laughs> Mr. Anthony, you was funny. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking you were gonna be funny with those glasses, but you were funny, you know? Sometimes they'll get like gangs in, but you were funnier than a motherfucker. You fuck me, I'd fuck you. And I was like, oh shit, like, I don't know. Like, mm, you got a tattoo on your face. Like, I don't, I might be out of your league. I'm not sure. Um, one woman walked up and she goes, you funny, you black a little bit. And I was like, that. <laughs> That's a t-shirt I'm gonna get made. I should have got it made, just black a little bit. <laughs> black dudes are a little more quiet about it. You know, it's usually in the bathroom. It's like, good shoot tonight, brother. I'm like, thank you, thank you, man. Although I got a really good compliment a couple weeks ago. This kid walked up to me and goes, yo, man. You the truth. I was like, that is the most, like, deepest 
amazing compliment I've ever gotten. Thank you. Maybe I'm Jesus, like I'm the truth. The truth, the way, the light. I don't know. Yeah. One guy yelled at me, like across a bar one time. He's like, hey, 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 hey. And I was like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. And I just look at him, I go, yeah. And he goes, you gonna make it. <laughs> Bought my drinks the rest of the night. I'm like, that's amazing, man, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black people have better weed, too. Um, <laughs> it's just a fact, I don't know. I, uh, I did a show the other night, my friend was like, yo, Bonazzo, you smoke weed? And I was like, I dabble sometimes, you know? And he gave it to me, and I don't know, this was like Southside Kush or what the hell it was, but it, it knocked me on my ass. I was in outer space, I don't even know where I was. They were passing around like it was a peace pipe, not affected by it at all, and I didn't know where I was. He's like, come on, Manazzo, we're going inside, we're going to a silent party. A silent party is like kind of like a rite of passage with your black friends. If you don't know what a silent party is, you basically go to a party with everybody's got a headset on, but each headset has a different song playing. One person can be listening to Drake, one person can be listening to Michael Jackson Thriller. It really works out well if you're white because you just look like another white guy with no rhythm. You know, it's just like, <laughs> like doing the Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> we had a moment we, we had like a bonding moment he's like yo man aunt he's like you so cool I don't even think of you as being white <laughs> I, was like, I was like that might be the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me <laughs> and he's like you my n-word and I was like I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> And then I thought about it, and I realized if a black person calls you their N-word, it's like their way of telling you they, they love you, you know? And I got really sad. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> You're my N-word too. <laughs> but I said N-word like that. I was like, N-word. <laughs> He's like, you can say it now, you blood. I'm like, I, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I was like, I want you to say it. Say it, motherfucker, say it. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> He's like, you can say it though, you, you blood, you can say it. I was like, I will call my family and let them know that we told each other we loved each other, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> he said, just say it. And I was like, I, I'm not gonna say it. I stay north, it's not a good idea. Like, I, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> we had an N-word reveal party, it all worked out. And, uh, <laughs> We determined that I am black a little bit. And, uh... <laughs> oh, man, you guys are fun. Fun times, man. I, uh, I'll do shows anywhere. I don't care. I did a show in Englewood uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, it, was, it was amazing. Because I, I, white people do this thing that I thought only white people do, but, it, but black people do it, too. Um, where like white people, they see black people, they're like, oh, I have to make them feel more comfortable. And they like adjust themselves or they try to like sound their, their version of whatever they think black is. And it's really awkward. You're like, what are you doing? Like, just, be, just be yourself. And I thought that was just a white thing. Black people do it too. I got out of my car in Englewood. This old black dude came out of nowhere. He goes, hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> I was like, I'm good. How, how are you doing? He's like, I'm fine this evening. He goes, top of the morning to you. And I go, top of the morning to you. 9.30 at night, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> then I went in to get chicken and it was me, it was me and just like five black women and that's when I realized you do not fuck with a black woman's chicken because they will kill you. Like I didn't know, I didn't know this and I went in and it was kind of scary because the lady working in the kitchen was not friendly either, you know? <laughs> She's just like, next! And the black woman would come up, she'd be like, you know, she's like, let me get a two piece! Catfish nugget and fried hard. This last time I was here, you didn't fried hard enough. I was like, holy shit. This is gonna be, there's gonna be a fight in here. Like, what? Is, they're gonna kill each other. Next one came up, she's like, flat tips, fried hard. Turkey tips, fried hard. Last time I was here, you didn't fried hard enough. I felt like I was like in the soup Nazi episode of Seinfeld. I was just like, I was like, oh. I was getting like nervous. I was like, oh my God, I'm next, I'm next. And she goes, nah, and then she saw me. She goes, oh, hey, baby girl, how you doing? <laughs> I
I was like, baby girl. Am I fucking Rebecca again? Like, what is happening? So I'm like, if she's gonna act white, I'm gonna act black. So I was like, let me get a two-piece and fry it hard. Cause last time I was here, you didn't fry it hard enough, motherfucker. I stayed north and I like it fried hard. Anthony motherfucker Bonazzo. <laughs> oh man. You guys are fun, man. You guys are good. You guys are good. You loosened up a little bit. It's good. I was talking to my friend a couple nights ago. He's like, eh. He's like, let me ask you a serious question. He's like, do you ever get mad when you see a black guy with a white woman? I was like, no, but I do get mad when I see everybody but me with a woman. Like that's... <laughs> that's why I was on blackpeoplemeet.com for a long time and yeah, my profile was marshmallow looking for hot chocolate and... Um, <laughs> I was like the only marshmallow on the whole site. I was killing it. It was amazing. You know, it was just, uh, you know, with two black women, they both smelled like cocoa butter. And uh, I thought that meant they were going to heal my emotional scars, but it, 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 they didn't. And um, it's fine, man. It's fine. <laughs> you guys are fun, man. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love getting live Yelp reviews during the show. <laughs> it was very funny. Three stars. <laughs> oh, man. I got to get out of here soon. I got to go to the bathroom. Um, I, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's wild, man. Like, it's... Uh, it's just weird, all these differences, man. Like, I, you know, I don't know. I don't even know how to begin. Like, I, I got accused uh, of being a racist a couple weeks ago. It didn't feel good, you know. I was on the red line, and I was with, um, was with my niece. I have three uh, nieces. They all have Italian names, Nicoletta, Gabriella, and Alessandra. And um, my one niece, Nicoletta, we have a few nicknames for her. We call her Nick, Nicka, Nickelodeon, right? So... <laughs> We're, uh, we're on the red line, and we're going downtown, and she keeps kicking my seat, and I kept telling her to stop. She keeps kicking my seat, I kept telling her to stop. Finally, she kicked my seat so hard that I banged my knee on the side of the seat, and I stood up on the red line, and I go, Nicka, please! Stop kicking my seat. It got really quiet, like over here. <laughs> and she's like, Uncle Anthony, I think that they think that you said something else. And I was like, Nick, are you crazy? Come on. Come on. Cra <laughs> you crazy. I actually got to get out of here, you guys. Um, I just, I do want to close with one thing. Um, it's, it, was, it was a very weird moment for me. Um, my, uh, my neighbor, I found out the other day, was a, uh, uh, like a secret racist. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, you know, where they whisper when they're being a racist <laughs> as if that somehow makes it better <laughs> that they're being a racist. You know, so I saw her in my elevator the other day, and she's like, "Hi, Anthony, how are you?" I'm like, uh, "I'm good. How are you?" She's like, "Well, we had a little incident outside the building the other day." I'm like, well, "What happened?" And she's like, "Well, there were a couple of black people <laughs> trying to get in the back door, and I wasn't sure if we should be letting black people into the building because last week we had an Asian. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if he was delivering food or what was going on." That. And in my head, I'm like, they still make you? Like, you're... <laughs> you're 
You're like a VCR of racism. Like, what? And I'm like, I, nothing I'm going to say to this woman is going to, like, convince her or get her to understand that she's being a racist. Like, she's too old, you know? She's like an Oldsmobile. There's too many miles. Like, I can't fix her, right? It's over. Like, it's just time to get a new car, you know? So now whenever I see her, I just whisper really weird shit at her just to freak her out, you know? Like, I started the other day. She goes, Anthony, are you dating anybody? I'm like, yeah, it's going really well. She came over for drinks the other night. I had a little bit too much to drink and ended up slapping her around a little bit. And then she pulled out a knife and I accidentally stabbed her in the stomach with it. <laughs> now I don't know what I'm gonna do with the body. Because it's starting to smell. And the worst part about it, she was black. <laughs> you guys, that has been my time here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Just real quick, I just want to say a quick, a quick thank you to all you guys that came out tonight. This is amazing. This is, uh, this is, so, this is so nice. Like, I, I really am, like, at a loss for words. Some of you told me you traveled back from out of town to be here. Some of you have kids, you know, that are at home or in the car. I don't know where they are, but, um, <laughs> you know. This, is, this was an amazing night. Zanies is the first time I performed at Zanies, probably, like, 2006, and a Rising Star Showcase. And uh, just, you just, you know, you just keep, you keep working. You keep going. And, and you know, had a, a lot of personal things happened to me over the last few years. I lost my dad. Uh, my mom lost her vision. She, she's legally blind now. She's actually having probably, like, her 14th surgery surgery tomorrow to try and fix it and um, it's 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 uh, it's 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 hard you know because you look at it and you're like well you know she was married by dad for 56 years and I always say that she, she'll never see the world again the way she did without him so that's probably why and you know you go through so much because shortly after she lost her vision my sister had a stroke and then she lost two of her children and then I got skin cancer probably in my thumb from tinder for so long but um, <laughs> it's just the point <laughs> that I, I, I try to make is it, it, this is all hard. You know, the comedy, life, everything. It's a, it's a, it's a hard struggle and, um, you know, y but you just keep going because you, you got to. You got to keep going and you got to persevere. And, um, you know, the one thing that always has helped me is to say to myself, someone always has it worse than I do. And that's not to say that I'm going to minimize my problems and say that they don't exist, but I'm going to say, what am I going to do with those problems? Am I going to succumb or am I going to persevere? And I'm choosing to persevere. And I think that, you know, just, yeah, thank you. So I know some of you guys got to go, but, you know, if you, if you have time, Come next door. We're going to Old Town Alehouse for drinks. Talk to people. You guys are all my people. Everybody I, is in here is, is, in, is in here for a reason. These are people that I love and my close people that I've known since I've lived in Chicago have come out. People have come to every single show I've headlined here, and I appreciate all of you. And I and I think that you know right now, yeah, yeah, you know, and that's. Just the last thing I want to say is that, you know, I, if, if we could use laughter, we need it now more than ever. So thank you guys so much. And we out here. <laughs> we out here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. <laughs>